Up to now, we have used basic types like string, int, double, and bool. However, when you run an experiment, you will need to do things like show images, play sounds, give time for responses, match stimuli to responses, and much more. Presentation includes many other more complex types that are tailored to the needs of behavioural scientists. The basic types we've already learned handle data that is relatively simple, such as numbers, true or false values, or sets of characters. The data types that handle stimuli are more complex. For example, presentation can generate and display graphics that contain text using a data type called text. The data handled by this type includes information about the graphic itself. It also includes properties needed to generate the graphic, such as the caption, font, font size, and so on. To make it easier to handle, all of this data is packaged together into what we call an object. Each object has a particular type. In this case, we say that we have a text object because the corresponding type is named text. In previous tutorials, we learned how to create variables. For example, here we create int, bool, and string variables. Recall that a variable is like a box holding some data that is labelled with the variable name. When you call the variable name in your program, presentation will retrieve and use the data stored in the box with that name. We can also create variables of type text. Like the basic types we've already learned, creating a text variable is like creating a labelled box that holds some data. However, unlike the basic types, the data contained inside a text variable is not a text object itself. Instead, a text variable contains what we call a reference. A reference is something that identifies a particular text object. As an analogy, you might imagine that every text object we create is assigned a unique number, and that it is this number identifier that is stored in a text variable. Exactly what method presentation uses to implement references is not important. In our diagram, we illustrate a reference value by using an arrow to indicate which object a variable refers to. Therefore, there is an important distinction between a text variable and a text object. For an int type, the variable actually contains the integer itself. For a text type, the variable contains only a reference to a text object, not the text object itself. For this reason, we call the type text a reference type. Types like int and string are called value types. We can create a text variable using a declaration just as for any other type. However, creating a text variable does not create a text object. If there are no text objects, you might wonder what value is in the text variable to begin with. The default value of a reference variable is a special reference value that doesn't refer to anything. This value is sometimes called a null reference. To create a text object, we use a special type of expression called a new expression. A new expression consists of the special word new and then the type name. The resulting value of the expression is a reference to the object just created. We can then assign this value to a variable of the same type. In this example, the declaration text intro creates a text variable, the expression new text creates a text object and yields a reference to it and the assignment statement copies that reference to the variable. We then arrive at the structure illustrated here. The difference between reference types and value types becomes clearer and more important in the case of copying variable values. In this example we create a new int variable, count2, and assign to it the value inside the variable count. What we end up with is another int variable that also contains the value 1, 2, 3. So, in memory, there will be two independent integers stored that happen to have the same value. Now, let's create a second text variable and assign to it the value in the first text variable. Remember that the value in the text variable intro is not a text object, but only a reference to a text object. The assignment statement will store this reference value in the variable intro2 as well. What we end up with is two text variables that both refer to the same text object. You might wonder why we need reference types in addition to value types. 
why can't we just have text variables contain text objects? Presentation could have been designed that way. However, as we start writing real programs, we will see the importance of having multiple variables referring to the same object. For now, here are two reasons reference types are important. First, data inside objects can be quite complex and take up a lot of memory. For example, we mentioned earlier that text objects contain data about the graphic itself once it has been generated. It would waste a lot of memory to have multiple copies of that object, as well as waste time making the copies. Storing only the reference to the object takes up less memory. Second, we will see that many objects refer to other objects. For example, our text object may ultimately be one of many graphical elements appearing on a single display, which is managed by an object of type picture. If we wanted to change something about that text object, we would want to make changes to the one that the picture object is using, and not some other copy of it. Now that we know how to create objects and refer to them, we will learn how to interact with them in the next tutorial.